Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. We had, to, we had to straighten things out in the Army. I was with the cavalry, and we were over there to die, and we didn't give a dip about it, about, you know, we'd go into a place and we'd leave and we'd knock off 30 glasses accidentally and go on out, you know. Sure. We wouldn't fuss no fight, just knock the glasses on down. But before you went into the Army, you were at the University of Pennsylvania. T tell me how you, how you ended up there. I ended up at the University of Pennsylvania because I had self-respect. I respected William Waddell, and they respected me. Okay. See, <laughs> once in a while you run across a cat come from an odd name, and the two of us say, and I just say, what the H are you talking about, man? I don't what are you talking about? Well, I'm, I'm talking to you. No, you're, talking to, you're not talking to me. I'm Waddell. You know me, don't you? You Joe, I know you. You get them straight the first day. Sure. But basically, when you run across a cat like that one start to call you the names, you run across the worst representative of that race. Sure. See, sure. I felt like hell. <laughs> you know why? Because I was giving everybody else help telling them, we got a lot of men at Tuskegee. It's good for you. Go and get the experience. Uh -huh. Do this and do that. I'm happy you're going. Shake my hand. <laughs> In about two months, I was greeted. <laughs> they came out looking for Lieutenant William H. Waddell, Jr. <laughs> came to the hospital. He, we don't have no lieutenant here. And finally, I never will forget this white lady who Mrs. Lomax, I think, who was in charge of telegram, Dr. Waddell, did you ever go to the Army? I said, yeah. Were you reserved? Yeah, look on the wall then. Tell me about it. And I looked up there. I said, I'm reserved also. Well, I'm looking for you. <laughs> I said, well, well, what is it? You are to report to the horse cowry division in 10 days. Can't do it. So you were you were mad when this came. I went. I, they gave me five more days to get my stuff together because I was in charge of a school of veterinary medicine and veterinary clinic and everything. They gave me five more days to attend to get ready. Now, did they give you the option to defer? No. Not to. Okay. They needed me. They need a horse doctor in North Africa. So. So when you were called, uh, when I when I was called, I went to Fort Clark, Fort Clark, Texas, but they needed a better, trained veterinarian with the horses. They had two or three dog men, but they don't know anything about horses. So I had to close up the school's hospital and everything. How did it feel uh, at this point in time? You, your wife was. Pregnant with your unborn child, and you—I felt I felt like a dog because I was wishing everybody else happiness, <laughs> Godspeed and success, and here they call me. And they wanted you to. Um, part of it was for fighting. You ought to report. They didn't say, you know, they, they didn't say you got such and such a time. You ought to report in ten days. Okay. To fight for, they wanted you to fight for freedoms that that you didn't even have in the U.S. How did that feel? Well, I was a reserve officer. Uh -huh. That made the difference. If I had not been a reserve officer, I would have fought it. And the people want to fight it. The people in the town, the mayor of the town, and the whole counties, three counties around, because they didn't have a veterinarian. Uh -huh. But then I came up and said, well, I promise that I'd go if they call. Okay. So my word was my honor. They could have kept me out. So, so tell us how, which cavalry you served in. The 9th Cavalry. I served in the 9th Cavalry. Uh, the 2nd Horse Cavalry. Wait a minute, just put it this way. I served in the 5th Brigade. The 2nd 
the ninth, the second horse cavalry of the ninth cavalry division. Okay. And uh, describe for me your your first describe for me your first days of, of active duty. Where were you? On the borders of Mexico, Fort Clark, Texas. Okay. With a bunch of no good veterinarians. <laughs> They didn't know a damn thing with veterinary medicine. Okay. And I worked 24 hours a day. 24 hours a day until I got one or two trained veterinarians, which took about a month, a month and a half. So you were training, um, you were training others when you were there in, in, in Texas? I had to train them. They were dog people. They didn't know anything with horses. They were trained to work on cats, dogs, and birds. Okay. And of all the people sent a bunch of damn fools like that to work with veterinarians, had to work with horses and mules, was an insult. Now were were all the were all the officers were all the officers black? No, I had white officers. Had black officers. I was officers in charge. What, what were relations like between blacks and whites in the army at this time? Oh, I never had any difference between whites and blacks as far as I'm con concerned, all of them same color. Okay. I didn't see any black people, no white people, just all people. Was everybody treated the same? Hmm? Was everybody treated the same? If you didn't permit them to be that way, they wouldn't be. Because mm -hmm. it's hard to get prejudice out of people. Sure. But some of the people that I trained and worked with me turned out to be some of my better friends in life. Mm -hmm. They're white people from the deep south. <laughs> you have to train and teach. And these folks that you trained and teach, do you, you ended up in, in Italy and North Africa together. Well, they took it very easy because they were going to Italy and North Africa. You don't go to Italy and North Africa being prejudiced. <laughs> you get the hell shot out of you. I'm, I'm telling you where it is. Which, which country did you go to first in the war? In North, Af North Africa. What, what was it like seeing Casablanca. That? What was that like? To paint me a picture of what it looked like when you arrived. So, so many damn pure women. <laughs> <laughs> i never seen beauty like, in, like North Africa, really. I mean, they were beautiful women, all the way through North Africa. You just stop and have to look. Just stop and look. What were the surroundings like there in in North in Casablanca, North Africa? A lot, like the Surrey here. Here in Hawaii. Were you? Did anything surprise you? Did you have any ideas of what Africa might be like? Well, I was surprised to be in Africa, Africa, but I was proud to be there instead of Japan because things were more active in Japan, shooting-wise. But then it turned out to be very active in North Africa, too. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about some, some memorable times that you had when you were in North Africa in the war. Well, one of the most memorable things was to watch those beautiful women in all those bars <laughs> of all colors and creeds and whatnot. Just beautiful women. You understand what the hell happened to America? You begin to think. What the hell happened to America? That's right. Um, you, Didn't make you. So, so the women were, were beautiful. Beautiful, okay. beautiful. And nice. 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 They, melt, they made you feel like you were at home, not for long, because you were on your way to front. But you enjoyed the fellowship while you were there. And what was it like when you got to the front? Well, you can't really appreciate that unless you're going outside and that's not a shooter at your feet. <laughs> Shoot around you. Then you feel funny. Uh -huh, I bet you do. <laughs> did you have? Because you don't know when the next one's gonna get you. you know, did, did you have your own horse? Hmm? Did you have your own horse? Did you have your own horse? Oh yeah, yeah. I had two horses. 
Austin's had two offers. And, and what was his name? Max was name of one, and Nix. Max and Nix. Max and Nix. Short names. Okay. Well, was, the, was the cavalry segregated, or were there blacks and whites in the cavalry? No, we broke segregation when we got there. You broke segregation when you got there? We refused there? to eat and go to the dining hall. Tell me more about that, how, <laughs> how you broke it. Well, we just refused to go to the damn dining hall. Here you uh, go to a place to fight, and you were separated, your officers. Japanese were separated, those that were there. Chinese were separated, but we refused to go in a dining room. You and the and the other the other black officers. The yeah. Other. And what happened when you refused? They made us go in a dining room, but they couldn't make us eat. <laughs> and then you read the paper <laughs> and go to PX and get cheese and crackers until uh, we got a new officer. Uh -huh. who agreed with us. He's white officer from New York. Okay. Mm -hmm. There were one or two white officers from the South who agreed. Mm -hmm. And so after that, you all ate together, all the men ate together. When we left Fort Packer and Henry, we were eating together. Mm -hmm. And a lot of white soldiers, officers said that we will not go overseas with, with a precious outfit because uh, we, we had become fodder. Okay. So your white officers, a lot from the south and around, just refused to eat with us. Okay. Well, I was an officer too. Uh-huh. And... Uh, so you fought against this? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. How are you going over here give your damn life out that someone will kill you and talking about you can't eat with them? Mm -hmm. I'm the oldest one, it's one more living, that fought. One more buffalo that soldier, fought. right. See, there was some maybe went over later as a part of the older boys, but they didn't fight. Okay. See, fighting was over. We were, we were where the stuff was, where the hot stuff is, or was. Uh, for young people, when they ask you what a buffalo soldier is, what, how do you explain it to them? You tell them the best things about the buffalo soldier. You always tell the young people the best stuff. Share some of those with me. Huh? Share some of those things with me. The fact that a lot of my men, after we're an army men, could not eat in places, could not drink in places. We broke a lot of that crap up before going overseas. <laughs> you see a man overseas die for his country and told him he can't eat at a damn restaurant. Exactly. We had men that got so terrific that they go into a restaurant where it was Tablecloth all white and whatnot, all the dishes, snatch a <laughs> cloth off, walk on out. Not one until they got you out of town. Okay. T tell me something else unique about the Buffalo Soldiers. He was a gentleman. They were trained and knew how to act when they went to homes. We never had a case about one Buffalo soldier raping a woman. And that was in the initial stages. Somewhere in Texas, they lynched him. Mm. But they went back and killed about 40 people in town. You don't read about it, but in our stuff, reading around, you read about it. But the Buffalo soldier was a gentleman he was trained by gentlemen. He, Buffalo soldiers trained by West Point people. Okay. And it, it made a difference. 
What are you most proud of in terms of, of your service? Hmm? What are you most proud of in terms of uh, the service that you, that you did in the, in the war? Well, I'm most proud of getting back alive, number one. <laughs> and number two, uh, at times thinking about those that didn't get back. Okay. And their people and what they left. Did you lose any friends in the war? Well, yeah, you lose men by you. You, all, you get very friendly when you're at the war front. Mm -hmm. You get to know your men. You get to know how many fa in the family. And you become a part of that man's family, cause, but he, you are his only support mm -hmm. that he has. Sure. The officer in charge. His wife's not with him, sure not with him. So it's you, your officer keeps up that morale. And really relied on one another. Well, the U.S. Buffalo soldier is important because you can play show hands on him anytime you want him. He's ready and available. Mm -hmm. 24 hour man. You can call him to the borders of Mexico, to the Canadian border, South America border. Anytime you call him, the Buffalo soldier is there and is ready. Okay. Willing, ready, to go, and can go. And very courageous, and very courageous. Yeah. No, because uh, the Buffalo soldier one time was the one of the few soldiers that, it may have been crazy, but didn't mind dying mm -hmm. for his country, you know. Now, now you actually um, were injured, correct? You were injured when you were in the war, correct? Yeah. T tell me what happened. The fifth cervical vertebrae was fractured. And uh, they weren't shooting to, at me to fracture me. They were shooting at the mule. The mule had the food. I see. Mule pack. And they shot the mule. The mule fell on me and went rolling about 10 feet down the hill. Did you break your neck? Huh? D did you almost break your neck? Fractured. Fractured it, yeah. okay. Fifth cervical vertebrae. Uh -huh. So, uh, how, long, how long did it take before you recovered? Well, I was amongst, among a bunch of fools, ignorant people, and instead of them getting me to the hospital, they put packs around and under. They were taught to do that, uh -huh. around and under and over. Under, over, around, again, mm -hmm. like that, and put my arm in a sling, mm -hmm. and that held that bone in place. In I place see. until where I was going. Okay. Um, this time that you were serving uh, in World War II, your daughter was born, correct? And you went home when your daughter was born. Yeah. Okay. I was uh, I was on the borders of Mexico then. Yeah, we were patrolling the borders of Mexico because uh, it wasn't Panko Villa, but somebody after him was coming across stealing cattle and goats and sheep. And he was a very shrewd man. He'd work at night. Mm -hmm. See, so why are you sleeping, he's working. And you wake up the next morning, the farmer's out there crying that he lost four his sheep like during the night. I see. Okay. Or two cows or three horses. Uh -huh. So then we had to go out and go looking. I see. Oh. Sometimes we'd find, sometimes we wouldn't. Uh -huh. Sometimes to keep them watching, keep them moving. Uh -huh. That's what the Mexicans would do. Keep them going. Keep them going to the next area. Okay. Out of that area.